Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, we're going to be doing a full in-depth review of the new DJI Phantom 4. Now, this is probably one of the most feature-rich uh, drone that I've ever come across. And basically, if you're interested in spending the big chunk of change that this thing uh, comes at, uh, we're going to go through uh, the many features and capabilities that the Phantom 4 offers. And at this point, I've had several hours of flight time with this thing, so I'm going to go through the goods and bads and determine if this thing is really worth it and if it's right for you. So let's get right into it. Now the Phantom 4 is a completely new redesign from the ground up compared to the previous generation Phantom 3s. It's now using a lightweight, strong magnesium alloy unibody construction and the camera has been moved to the core center uh, area of the drone giving it a better center of gravity thereby ensuring that you get a little bit more stable shots and of course you have a whole bunch of different sensors this time. Two forward facing optical sensors and two rearward facing sensors all in the hopes of avoiding avoiding all the objects and hazards you're going to come across when you're up in the air. Of course, this doesn't actually mean that the drone is completely uncrashable. Uh, trust me, you can definitely get yourself in uh, some serious trouble with this thing. And uh, even though the obstacle avoidance system uh, more or less works pretty nicely, it'll definitely stop if you point the drone towards yourself or towards a larger object. But if all of a sudden a large bird comes into its flight path and knocks it right out of the sky, that is definitely possible. And uh, again, this system is designed to avoid larger obstacles. Minor obstacles such as uh, thin tree branches or power lines are still going to be a big hazard that you want to avoid. Now one cool thing about the hazard uh, avoidance system that it's pretty much enabled in the P mode which is the mode that most people are going to be using when shooting video. Now, additionally when it goes into its fail safe modes such as return to home it'll actively avoid different objects. Uh, the same thing goes for the tap to go feature where you'll basically uh, tap on a specific specific feature in your environment and the drone will fly to that feature hopefully avoiding large obstacles along the way. Now of course uh, the obstacle avoidance system is turned off in full manual mode and indeed in the sport mode. Now speaking of the sport mode itself one thing that's really impressive to see on the Phantom 4 is that we have whole new redesigned motors as well as props. You have more secure fitting props. They're using a push and release system which uh, should entail enable the Phantom 4 to fly up to 72 kilometers an hour or about 44.7 miles an hour which is insanely fast sometimes faster than what most cars are traveling on a normal roads so you definitely want to be careful but if you want to pull off some pretty impressive high speed maneuvers or perhaps you want to get into some drone racing this thing is definitely ready for all that kind of stuff but definitely be careful with high speed comes high risk. Now the Phantom 4 also has an upgraded vision positioning system which is a system designed to uh, essentially keep the drone in one specific area and to remove as many hover deviations as possible especially at low altitudes or areas where you don't have a GPS signal lock and with the more beefier ultrasonic sensors this I think can now work up to uh, 10 meters high compared to the Phantom 3's 3 meters high and you'll have less overall hover deviations with uh, plus or minus 30 centimeters compared to the older generation 150 centimeters so this entail just means that this is going to be more stable at lower altitudes and it's going to be a more easier to fly in areas where you don't have a GPS location or when you're flying indoors. Now the battery design and capacity has been completely redesigned. You're now looking at a larger battery 53 50 milliamp hours and essentially with our uh, endurance test we average around 26 and a half uh, minutes with uh, just doing some basic maneuvers nothing too fancy and too aggressive again flight time will always fluctuate depending upon what you're doing but the really impressive bit was the fact that you can get almost uh, 30 minutes of flight time if you're really gentle with the drone which is really impressive and certainly class leading there's not a lot of other flying camera platforms in this category that can offer battery performance and uh, power efficiency at these levels now the video quality coming off of this thing is really exceptional. It's very similar quality to the Phantom 3s. You still have a 4K video at 30 FPS as well as a 2.7K at 30 FPS and full HD at 120 frames per second. So you can do a little bit of slow motion which is always cool. Just note that when you are shooting slow motion you are going to notice that the image will crop in a little bit further so you won't have the full field of view that you do in the regular modes. And at the 4K resolution you have tons of detail to 
spatial resolve, a decent amount of color information, and you can even shoot at a flat image profile. So if you want to do some color correction, you can. So it's excellent for professionals out there that want to get some really impressive looking shots. In addition to all that, they've also improved the aspherical lens on the Phantom 4. You have less overall barrel distortion and the chromatic aberration should be also reduced, which is a nice little touch and upgrade from the Phantom 3s. Now, of course, one of the big selling features of this drone is all the different smart capabilities. And as we mentioned before, you have things like a tap to go feature, but my favorite uh, feature so far definitely has to be the active uh, tracking system. Basically, you can uh, select a, a specific object that moves around or is going to be stationary, whatever you like in the environment, and it'll actively track its motion fairly accurately as long as it doesn't move too fast and uh, stray too far away from the camera's perspective. Now, ideally, uh, if you're running with the drone, it works pretty nicely as long as you're kind of right in front of it. It tracks you uh, fairly accurately, didn't have any issues there. But if you're going through more complex uh, terrain or uh, if there's sudden elevation changes in your pathway, uh, the drone definitely can get tripped up and it might uh, lose you. And if it does uh, lose uh, the uh, tracking target, it'll just hover there. And when it gets to a certain battery uh, life level, just return back to home, which is a nice safety feature. But again, this active tracking system more or less works pretty nicely in more simpler and straightforward circumstances, but it definitely can get tripped up and it's certainly not perfect. That being said, though, one of my favorite uh, kind of moves to do is the active uh, track a 360 degree camera move where uh, essentially you can make the uh, drone follow you and then also do a 360 degree shot. So you get a really nice all encompassing kind of perspective that is a very difficult move to do manually. Certainly a uh, human, even experienced pilot is going to have a hard time uh, perfecting this move, especially with a moving subject. But with the Phantom 4, it does it without a hitch and it does it at many different altitudes and perspective, which is always cool to see. Now, the controller that you get on the Phantom 4 is pretty much identical to the one that you found on the Phantom 3 Professional. So there's not a lot of changes there, but why fix something if it isn't broken and the controller is perfectly fine, fairly easy to fly with, and you can change all the different parameters and the speed of the gimbal and you have all your essential buttons and controls nicely laid out even for beginners it's really easy to fly the drone with this thing and the only real thing that's missing is perhaps an HDMI output uh, perhaps if you want to connect uh, some VR goggles or get a first person's perspective or even uh, put it onto an external monitor or do some external recording that would have been nice to see you do have that feature on the Inspire 1 control now lastly I'm a pretty big fan of the DJI Go app very simple to use works for iOS and Android all sorts of different devices out there tablets smartphone whatever you have most likely it'll work and the live monitoring on a DJI Go app is excellent very nicely laid out you can change all the different flight parameters the video quality settings everything is really simple and straightforward to use another feature I like is the flight simulator you can actually simulate uh, how to fly your uh, Phantom 4 drone before actually taking off in reality that's kind of a nice uh, interesting introductory kind of uh, simulation exercise for beginners who will want to just learn the basics. Now, as per usual, we're going to sum up the review by going through the disadvantages and advantages that the Phantom 4 presents. We're going to start with the stuff that I didn't like or some of the improvements that uh, we can have on this thing for perhaps future models. So firstly, on the controller itself, uh, you don't have an HDMI video output. So if you want to output to an external monitor or perhaps do some external video capturing, that isn't a possibility over here. It is on the Inspire 1 drone with uh, that control controller that comes with it, but not over here. Would have been nice to see uh, that feature on the Phantom 4. Now the battery life on this thing is class leading and exceptional, but you are going to inevitably run out of juice. And when you do, you're going to wish to have a second battery. And the batteries for this thing are not cheap. Uh, they retail for around $170. And if you start uh, flying this thing on a more consistent basis, and you're going to need more and more batteries to have longer uh, flight times and a prolonged uh, photography period, it's definitely going to add to an already expensive purchase. 
Now, another issue is regarding kind of the marketing strategy of uh, this drone, and that's uh, the fact that it's so easy to fly that a toddler or a child could fly it. It's completely idiot proof, and that is definitely not the case. There are uh, several scenarios where you can crash this thing, seriously damage or hurt uh, somebody else, and uh, you definitely want to be careful. It's not as easy as using a smartphone or a tablet or anything like that. It is a potential weapon that you want to be careful of. And just like any other flying objects at a moment's notice, you could be out uh, $1,400 in an instant. Now furthermore, even though that the camera quality in a good lighting condition is excellent in most uh, day environments, you're going to find a really great and crisp 4K video. The slow motion is a great feature, but of course, if you want to shoot in uh, low light conditions, perhaps even at night, you are going to find a lot of uh, graininess in your video and it's certainly not optimized for extreme low light condition. And that's definitely going to be a limitation towards uh, this uh, camera platform compared to ones that use a dedicated dedicated camera that has better low light performance. And certainly the last issue I have is regarding the price tag. At around $1,400, as we mentioned before, this is definitely not a entry-level drone. Uh, it's definitely an expensive hobby. And compared to some of the other Phantom drones that DJI is offering, you can get something like the Phantom 3 Standard, which retails for under $500, has many of the great safe flying features that uh, you come to expect these days with a modern drone. And of course, it has a 2.7K camera all the way up to the Phantom 3 uh, 4K and Professional, which uh, again, give you about the same quality in terms of the video capabilities and everything like that. Certainly you don't have obstacle avoidance and some of the smart features that the Phantom 4 has, but uh, again, is it worth the extra uh, four to $500? Uh, probably not. For most people, uh, I would definitely recommend to save that money and eventually down the road, they'll probably trickle down some of this smart technology into the more economic economical price drones. Now besides those issues, there are a ton of excellent features that the Phantom 4 offers. Firstly, I'm really impressed of how minimal the hover deviations are, uh, specifically when it comes to the horizontal plane. You can do uh, time-lapse photography with this and uh, it just adds to the stability and overall safety aspect of uh, this flying camera platform where it'll pretty much just stay there even without a GPS lock. The vision positioning system is just getting better and better with every iteration. Next, even though it's not completely idiot proof, a lot of the aspects of the obstacle avoidance system is really quite revolutionary. It'll scan all of the large objects and nine times out of 10, it'll definitely uh, stop the drone or avoid those objects altogether. You still wanna be careful of like smaller objects, power lines and tree branches, but generally speaking, uh, definitely excellent safety features. Another great feature is certainly the tap to go and the active uh, track system. It works flawlessly. I'm really impressed of how uh, consistently it'll basically track you. And I love doing those 360 degree hover movements, which always look very cinematic and very epic. Furthermore, from a visual standpoint, the 4K camera is excellent, even though it's not a huge improvement from the previous generation, a series of drones, Phantom 3s, uh, but it's still going to give you pretty darn amazing overall uh, image quality with really sharp uh, looking uh, fine detail and as well as great color rendition. And plus with the uh, dynamic range being increased with the Cinema D modes and some of the flat image profiles, you can even uh, do a little bit of color timing and color correction to get uh, the image that that you desire. Now, as we mentioned before, the sport mode is pretty darn impressive. This thing can basically travel up to 72 kilometers an hour, which is really darn incredibly fast. You can even outpace some cars and in most streets in Canada, 60 kilometers is the limit. So this thing can actually travel faster than most cars traveling at a given time, which is uh, pretty darn insane. Of course, you want to be careful, but if you want to do some drone racing, uh, this thing is certainly capable of doing so. Next with the Lightbridge technology, you get a 720p HD feed at 30 frames per second. Latency is pretty uh, decent. It's not going to be quite as good as an analog signal in terms of overall latency times, but uh, great for uh, aerial photography. And with a five kilometer unobstructed uh, line of sight range, it's definitely uh, very capable, even if you want to go far away. 
And last but not least, so my favorite feature on the Phantom 4 is more of a simpler one, and that's the uh, 27 to 28 minute flight time. And based on our testing, it's very consistent. Uh, sometimes you can even get 30 minutes if you're very careful, better than all the Phantom uh, 3s, uh, better than the Inspire 1, and certainly better than any of the competition out there. So uh, with the uh, battery performance and the power efficiency and the overall capabilities, really puts this thing on a class of its own. But really on that, guy. Guys, that's really it. Definitely let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you guys are uh, still debating upon which drone to get if you're in the market and are kind of considering the Phantom uh, 3 or the Phantom 4, definitely check out our full in-depth comparison. We'll have a link in the description uh, down below. But if you have any specific questions, uh, let me know. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and check out the links in the description for detailed links about everything we talked about. Thanks again for your support. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Take care.